Hello viewers, 4DIYers here with another video for everyone. In this particular video here, I'll be showing you how to remove and grease the front CV axle on a third generation Dodge Ram four wheel drive. This particular truck I'm working with here today is a 2006 1500 model. A CV joint needing grease may have resistance when rotating, cause a vibration or a growling noise. However, you don't have long to grease that CV joint. It's always moving when the truck is in motion, therefore it can cause damage quickly, eventually requiring a replacement. First start by safely elevating the truck. Remove the 22mm lug nuts. Here I'm using my OEM tools, 24481 half inch drive 20 volt lithium ion impact wrench from mobile distributor supply. Nut busting torque of 300 foot pounds and tightening torque of 260 foot pounds two-speed transmission, and it includes a charging station. The link for this product will be included in the video description. Remove the wheel and pop out that center cap. Reinstall the wheel and tighten the lug nuts. These don't need to be torqued. Lower the truck back onto the ground. This is by far the easiest way of loosening the half shaft axle nut. Using a 35 millimeter socket with a Johnson bar, Loosen that axle nut. Jack up the wheel and then remove it. Use an axle stand as a safety. Crack the master cylinder reservoir cap to relieve any pressure when compressing the caliper pistons. The hub can be angled out so it's easier to access those caliper carrier bolts. Compress the pistons in the caliper using large interlocking pliers. Use a 22mm socket with a half inch drive ratchet to loosen and remove those caliper carrier bolts. Finally, remove the caliper, pad and carrier assembly. Tie it up to the frame so it's not hanging by the rubber flex line. After that is removing the rotor. Place it somewhere safe so it doesn't come into contact with any oil or grease. If the ball joints and tie rod is equipped with castle nuts, you will need to remove the cotter pins. They may also be equipped with stover nuts, such as the upper and lower ball joints, therefore there's no pins needed to be removed. Remove the tie rod. The tie rod is newer here, so I'll be reusing it. The nut was made flush with the stud, and then it was hit with a hammer to disconnect it on the taper. Place it off the side. Using an eight millimeter, remove the bolts holding on the fender liner. The fender liner is removed so we can access the ABS sensor wire. Push the fender liner in towards the frame, then unclip it around the fender's edge. Finally, pull out the fender liner. A cable tie was holding the wire back, so that was cut using side cutters. As for disconnecting the electrical connector for the ABS sensor, there will be a red clip which needs to be pulled out. A standard screwdriver is best for this. The standard screwdriver can also be used for bending open that clip to pull the connector apart. Once it's pulled up, then pull apart the connector. Remove the nut for the upper ball joint. I'm replacing the ball joints while this is apart. A hammer is used to hit the exposed stud upwards. The taper should break free. Keep in mind, the upper control arm is under tension. The bottom ball joint threaded stow was spinning so I needed a ratchet with a socket to hold it stationary while removing the nut with a wrench. Depending on the brands of ball joints, socket sizes will vary which is why I'm not providing the info. Remove that half shaft axle nut. If the spline is stuck into place you can use a lead or brass hammer to help break it free. Lead or brass won't damage the threaded stud as it's softer than the axle shaft. Once disconnected, then remove the steering knuckle and disconnect the spline from the half shaft. Use a strap to hold the axle in place so it doesn't come apart. My lower ball joint here didn't require a separator. For removing the axle, typically this can be done using a pry bar. It's best to force the axle straight out, it'll disconnect the easiest. If the pry bar is slightly pushing the axle on an angle, it'll make the disconnection much harder as the clip is binding. Another option is using a hammer to gently tap the axle out to help disconnect that clip. Do not become too aggressive as this can cause damage. Finally, the half shaft is removed. 
Once out, I like to place it on cardboard, which will help contain any mess. A brass wire brush is used to clean up any stuck on debris so the CV joint doesn't become contaminated when the boot is removed. I'm not completely disassembling these as the boots are still in good condition. I will only be removing the large band clamp to roll the boot back. For this I'm using a rotary tool with a cutting disc. Take your time, it doesn't need to be fully cut as you can use something to pry under that clamp to help break it free. This is a spot weld clamp, I'll show you the other version in a moment. Rubber gloves are a must for this as it does get messy real fast. With a paper towel, use your fingers to scrape out the old grease. Additional paper towel is used to wipe away any remaining exposed grease. I didn't use a solvent to wash away any grease because that would require full disassembly to grease those other areas. Once sufficiently cleaned, pack in new grease inside the boot around the joint. As for the type of grease used in CV joints, it is specifically required for this application and it will be stated on the tube. So don't use just any grease. Ensure there is plenty of grease inside, but don't overfill it. You want to make sure the components inside are sufficiently covered. Too much grease can build up heat, this will expand and can be forced out or will cause a premature failure of the joint. Wipe away any grease residue from the outside and then push the boot back into place. Here I have a band clamp. There is also another style available which requires a special tool. You'll need to know the diameter of the clamp's location to pick the correct size of clamp. The clamp has various holes to adjust it to different sizes. Wrap the clamp around the boot, then lock it into place. A hammer can be used to help lock those tabs down as it may not be angled correctly. Then using an ear clamp crimping tool, crimp the raised portion. This will tighten the clamp around the boot. These are only a one time use. Moving on to the other side, this has a different clamp, similar to the ones I just installed. These can be opened up using a chisel. Simply insert the chisel under the overlapped portion to pry it apart. This side here doesn't have a retaining clip holding the joint together. Simply pull the boot back and pull the joint apart, but make sure the rollers don't come apart. Again, clean all that grease out. This side does have cleaner grease, just go and bind the color. Once sufficiently cleaned, then apply new grease inside the housing. Again, don't overpack it. Finally is putting it back together. Wipe away any grease residue. Install the new band clamp. Make sure it's as tight as possible before crimping the connection. Make sure that spline is clean before installing. Then snap it back into place. You'll hear it lock into place and you can give it a pull test to ensure it is properly seated. Just make sure you pull at the housing and not further back on the axle. As for reassembly, the spline is slipped back into place on the wheel bearing assembly. The steering knuckle is then lifted into place on the lower ball joint and then the castle nut is installed. Medium grade thread locker is applied to the half shaft threaded portion and then the nut is installed. I jacked up the lower control arm to help put some tension on the suspension so it's easier to install the upper control arm. Use a pry bar to pull down on the upper control arm. The coil spring was used as a leverage point. Once it's in place, install that castle nut. Then is installing the tie rod. Tighten up the upper ball joint. The upper ball joint torque specification is 40 foot pounds or 54 newton meters. Tighten the lower ball joint. The lower ball joint torque specification is 38 foot pounds or 52 newton meters. Finally is tightening up that tie rod. The tie rod nut torque specification is 45 foot pounds or 61 newton meters. When working with castle nuts, Make sure the slots are aligned with the hole in the threaded shaft. This can only be done by tightening that nut further. 
Do not loosen the nut. Install the cotter pin and then bend over the ends. The rotor is then reinstalled. A wire brush is used to clean away any rust or debris from the back side to prevent any run out. If you have old hubs, I would recommend using a wire brush on these too. Install the caliper assembly. The torque specifications for the caliper carrier bolts is 130 foot pounds or 176 newton meters. Reconnect the ABS sensor. A cable tie did hold back the wire from any moving components and this same method can be used again. My wire wasn't clipped in anywhere, but I can assume the hole towards the bottom of the fender liner is where that fur tree style clip was snapped in. The fender liner can then be reinstalled. Push it as far back into the top of the frame rail and then tuck it up in behind the fender. Install those 8mm bolts. Install the wheel. You may need to clean up the hub mounting face in the wheel to ensure there's no run out. Considering these are aluminum wheels, I would recommend using a brass wire brush. The torque specifications for the lug nuts is 135 foot pounds or 183 newton meters. Tighten that half shaft axle nut. The half shaft nut torque specification is 185 foot pounds or 250 newton meters. Reinstall the center cap and then lower the vehicle back onto the ground. New videos released every week on my channel. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, it's a huge help to me and leave a comment below if you found this tutorial helpful. If you're not a subscriber, be sure to hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching.